Hey there, my name is Chase Dinning. I'm an application engineer here at Quest Integration. Today I want to take you through the design process of a 3D printed whistle. We're going to look at some 3D modeling, then we're going to do some flow simulation on it, and 3D print it to see how that compares to our results. To start off, I'm going to create the side of the whistle, just a sketch of your basic whistle shape. I'll extrude that a thickness of 0.1 inches. On top of that body that we just created, I'll create another sketch for the interior of the whistle. This is going to be the sort of hollowed out area on the inside. But Chase, why not just extrude the whole part and then shell it out? I mean, whistles are just hollow, right? Oh, uh, hi. Yeah, that's true. But with the way this needs to be shaped on the inside to make the sound we're looking for, it would end up being more work and more features to get the same results. Now, can I get on with my job? I guess so, man. Whatever. Carry on. All right, then. You can see I've almost finished this sketch. We have the mouthpiece here with the round section at the back, and this area here, which is where most of the interesting stuff happens. But we'll see more about that later. I'll extrude this 0.8 inches. Next, we're going to create the P, as it's called, the sphere inside the round area. So what does the P do exactly? What's it made out of? Why is it there? Having a free-moving sphere on the inside, which is traditionally made of cork, changes the sound of the whistle as it moves around. That's where the basic whistle sound comes from. It's not just always one tone, which is boring. Much like this conversation about whistles. So I'll get back to SolidWorks if you don't mind. For the printer we plan on using, having this ball floating in the middle is kind of our best option. We can break off supports from the outside later. Then I'll just quickly create a sketch on this face, convert the edge of the opposite side, and extrude this another 0.1 inches. Finally, I just want to add some fillets to make this a little more realistic, and we'll have a completed whistle. So we can start printing and making noise now, right? It's all done? Well, we could, but at this point, we don't even know if this design will make any noise, so that could end up being a waste of material. Instead, within SolidWorks, we have some pretty useful tools for this. In flow simulation, there's actually a plot we can create to see acoustic level. This will tell us how loud in decibels the whistle will be. But first, we need to actually create and run the simulation. We'll just use the wizard to set this up in the flow sim tab. Here we can name it and choose a configuration if we had one. On the next screen, we can choose what unit system we want, and since it's where we are, I'm going to choose USA, mostly just because I want to see the pressures in PSI. The simulation will be internal flow, but if we had a different scenario, we could also use uh, external, like if we had a billboard in the wind. We don't need any of these physical features in this case, but they can be very useful in other cases. We want just air here, so I'll select that and add it. Hey, but Chase, what if we These wall conditions are fine as they are, and so are these initial conditions. Now that the setup for the actual simulation is done, we need to give it some input data. We can't run this interior simulation if the body isn't watertight, so we need to create some lids. We just select the faces that need closed off, and they should auto-create for us. Next, we need some boundary conditions, which will be applied to those lids. We know there won't be anything except ambient pressure. For that, we'll apply an environmental pressure on the inside of this, which should default to about 14.7 PSI. Next, we'll do something similar on the mouthpiece, but with a static pressure. The average person's lungs are capable of about 2 PSI. I'll add that to the ambient, or about 16.7 PSI. Now the pressures are all set up, we need to deal with meshing. Hold on. Sorry about that. We want to keep as few elements as we can to keep the solve time down, but we also want to get accurate results. So instead of giving it an overall fine mesh, we'll define some local meshes. We can use specific shapes, so I'll throw a rectangular one here since it fits the shape well. I'll give it some higher refinement levels as well. Next, I'll toss a cylindrical one here, again because it fits the shape very well. After that, it should be good to run. It takes about 20 minutes, so I'm going to skip ahead since I don't really think you want to watch that. Oh. So now that it's run, we can post-process our results. Before we look at the acoustic level, what we came here for, let's check out the flow trajectories. Let's have this use balls instead of arrows and be based on velocity. We 
We can animate it and watch what path the air takes once it leaves the mouthpiece. Ooh, what's this? Whoa! We could also define some different cut plots for velocity and pressure. But let's go ahead and get to the sound. I'll create another cut plot offset from this plane by some relatively arbitrary amount. I like the way contours look. In this dropdown, we want acoustic power level. And I want it to have a pretty high number of levels so it's smoother looking. Taking a look at that, it should make sounds at about 130 decibels. That's pretty good. I think we're ready to print this and test it out. We printed this on our Formlabs Form 3. This gave us an airtight build and allowed us to make some geometry with overhangs that FDM might have struggled with. It's all cured and we've removed all of the supports from it. Let's see if this is as loud as Sim said it would be. Actually, since I know you're gonna bug me about it anyway. Sweet. Contact me if you have any questions about any of these solutions. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. <laughs> <laughs>